afternoon, everyone. Depends on where you are. It's my honor to present with you about the vascularized lymph node transfer regarding its concept and surgical pearls. In particular, um, I'm very happy to share it with you during today. It's the Lymphedema Awareness Day. Um, first of all, how does a vascularized lymph node transfer work? This is one of our previous study. Basically, we inject ICG into lymph node bearing flaps or soft tissue flaps. And then um, we check the flow of the ICG. For um, lymph node bearing flap, the ICG will go directly into the recipient vessels, which is much quicker than a soft tissue only flap. Um, this suggests that the vascularized lymph node transfer works by draining all the lymph into the lymph node flap and then eventually um, drain the lymph throughout the vein to the systemic circulation. Similar results also were presented in our lab study with the animal. So this is a surgically created lymphedema, and then we transfer a vascularized lymph node here. Um, with the animal study, we can really dissect the flap out after we inject ICG, and you can see clearly where the ICG are in the lymph nodes and these ICGs drain directly into the vein. So it also confirms the mechanism of the vascularized lymph node transfer. This is another study from the Cleveland group, which um, corresponded to my ever mentioned mechanism. Um, plus that, they also measure the uh, lymph nodes within the lymph node bearing flaps in animal study, and uh, suggesting that the number of the lymph nodes also correlates with the latency time of ICG drainage in vascularized lymph node transfer. So taken together, um, how does the vascularized lymph node work uh, in this good quality and good quantity of the lymph nodes? Besides, it also uh, needs a very good recipient vein to drain the lymphatic drainage. Who need lymph node transfer? Traditionally, um, Patients who do not present suitable lymphatic vessels on MRL or ICG lymphandrogravy are eligible for um, vascularized lymph node transfer. Um, also, this may not be true for some um, surgeons, but basically, with this indication in mind, patients who would be eligible for receiving vascularized lymph node transfer would be patients who are in more advanced lymphedema, like stage three or stage four in chance classification. In these patients, the ICG lymphandrography was revealed completely dermal backflow. Why they presented dermal backflow? Because they have very um, severely fibrotic lymphatic vessels and a lot of um, subcutaneous fluids. So all uh, the fibrosis and severe damage of the um, lymphatic vessels uh, would not be the only pathological change. For patients who have more advanced lymphedema, they often have compressed the fibrotic artery and vein. Why? Because these patients are in the more swollen um, extremity, which has more fibrosis and more adipose deposition. They often have a couple episodes of infection, which may exacerbate the subcutaneous inflammation and fibrosis. Process. As a result, there are more, much more um, fibrotic tissue surrounding the recipient artery and recipient veins that will um, make the surgery more complication and specific consideration and preparation of the recipient size will be required. Things to consider about vascularized lymph node transfer, we need to find a good donor site and a very good preparation of the recipient site. Here are some of the commonly selected um, donor sites. This is a table from a published paper, but basically summarize most of the uh, commonly applied lymph nodes, including vascularized green lymph node, vascularized submental lymph node, supraclavicular and lateral thoracic lymph node, also omentan lymph nodes. In general, um, all these five flaps presented very good um, pedicle lens, which is at least a 2.5 centimeter. Um, this is the pedicle lens is generally um, very acceptable for vascularized lymph node transfer. And they all presented good size in terms of artery and veins. 
of the recipient size have most of the donor size have more than three lymph nodes, except that we don't really know how many lymph nodes um, inside the omentum flap. However, uh, the omentum flap is an area that is really rich of lymph nodes, so this wouldn't be your big considerations for that. Advantages for older skin flaps is that uh, the donor side is basically um, heightened and there is a, um, a very good skin powder on top of the flap, which um, can be applied for flap monitoring and replace soft tissue defect. But for harvesting of the uh, great omentum lymph node flap, uh, there is completely heightened scar with a large number of the lymph nodes. But um, an abdominal surgery is required, which may have potential donor sign minimal mobilities. Something um, that is not included in this table, but is uh, right now a more and more popular selection, is the one that for patients who come back for um, breast reconstruction and at the same time present presented with lymphedema and with abundant DIP flap. So that is, that is the combination of free DIP flap and free and pedicle um, green flap along with the DIP flap. So this is the picture showing how I designed the flap. Uh, this is a DIP and the perforators. And this is a green lymph node. And this is the flap being harvested. Um, we could take either unilateral or bilateral pedicle of the DIA, but the an additional set of recipient of the donor artery and vein for the lymph nodes will also be required to supercharge the lymph node and make the perfusion better. This is showing how the flap should be designed. No matter which skin, um, skin lymph node flap is required, this is basically how I design it. Um, skin paddle. Some surgeons would include skin paddle, but some surgeons would uh, prefer to just bury the flap. I personally um, include the skin paddle because we do more um, distal transfer, and I believe that the skin paddle is very important in the, in the distal transfer. Why? Um, look at this picture. This is a picture showing um, a flap and the samosis, um, but this is in the distal transfer, and you can see that after incision and after preparation of the recipient side, there is generally a skin defect on the uh, recipient side. Why? Because the recipient side was originally very fibrotic. Not only um, to include the skin paddle for uh, replacing the defect, but also um, it is a very good material for flap monitoring. Take a look at here and here. Um, the yellow arrow indicates the lymph nodes. You can see that all the lymph nodes are variable as very close to the um, close to the pedicle. So, um, in order to maintain good perfusion of the lymph nodes, we should avoid over dissection on the pedicle, but keep the pedicle and the lymph nodes as the whole. And then selection of the recipient site. For the recipient site, um, we can do it in the distal, we can do it in the proximal, or in the inter intermediate. Um, for a proximal transfer, um, for example, the axilla in upper extremity or growing in the lower extremity, there are generally a lot of recipient vessels available, so the recipient vessel shouldn't be a big problem. However, um, this is a previously operated area and also radiated area if for post mastectomy lymphedema. So the recipient vessel preparation can be uh, difficult because the vessel might be um, tasered and embedded into scar tissues. And the fully scar release will really require it to um, create a pocket and explore the recipient vessels and make the vessel eligible for microvascular anastomosis. For distal transfer, um, the recipient vessels are, just like I mentioned earlier, compressed by the fibrotic tissues and compressed by the um, engorgement and um, overload of subcutaneous fat. So uh, a general dissection, release tension, and creation of a huge pocket for the lymph node flap is required. 
uh, in, be in between the proximal and distal, we can also choose to transfer for a flap to the elbow. But in our previous um, experience and study and publications, our group general they prefer to transfer the flap to the distal because of the gravity effects um, that makes the flap to drain more uh, lymphatic fluid in comparison to the proximal ones. And this is a picture showing how we should prepare the recipient site. Uh, this is the distal recipient site, which is above ankle, uh, above the ankle area. Um, and this is the flap inset and after anastomosis. But in general, you can see like how fibrotic the tissue is here. And this is the recipient vein, this is the recipient artery. You can see the recipient vein here that we have done a lot of dissection and we really trim out all the scar tissue here and to dissect a short segment of it to allow really um, smooth drainage. Um, how to determine the smooth drainage after lymph, after venous anastomosis? You can see how um how engorgement the vein is, and um, the dissection would need to be adequate to allow um allow um fully expansion of the vein. And this is a recipient artery. Again, the artery is also compressed within the scar tissue. So uh, not only advantage ectomy is required, but also that we have to make sure there is really a very strong spurting from the artery before anastomosis. If there is flow, but is not uh, spurting good enough, um, you can do some kind of um, heparin expansion by inject heparin or um, normal cell line into the artery, expanded aspirate thrombus if there's any, to make it really pattern and to have a really good inflow for the flap. Then you can have good outflow and a very good pumping system within the lymph node flap to make it um, work better. After finishing the vascular anastomosis, a complete um, pocket creation by removing part of the subcutaneous fat is very, very important. As expected, after surgery, there will be a lot of tissue swelling. So uh, dissection and remove part of the subcutaneous tissue would allow a better space to accommodate the lymph node flaps and prevent subcutaneous swelling that may eventually compress our vascular pedicle. And similarly, this is why we prefer to transfer um, the lymph node flap along with the uh, it's above skin paddle. With the skin paddle, uh, we really have monitor materials. Um, in addition to that, we have adequate soft tissue to replace the soft tissue defect after dissection and to allow a more tension-free flap transfer. Um, so um, before surgery, um, this is how I like to do. In general, uh, I do either ultrasound or CD angiography to confirm the presence of the lymph nodes in my potential selected donor size. Also, also to confirm um, the recipient as well as the pedicle vessels, both artery and veins. Um, not only in the recipient side, something very, very important for distal transfer is that we also have to make sure that the proximal vein is in very good patency with our compression or stricture. Because as I mentioned in the very early of the talk, a patency of the vein is very, very important for vascularized lymph node transfer. Because vein um, can be considered a new um, way for the for the lymphatic fluid to be drained out. So um, not only the distal recipient vein, but also the proximal vein should be carefully um, evaluated before doing the surgeries. And here's an example of MRA and ultrasound that we're using to check the vessel and the lymph nodes. And then I'm going to share you with some of the clinical cases. This is actually congenital lymphedema, but the subcutaneous tissue character is the same as the uh, secondary lymphedema patients. So you can see that before surgery, not only the swelling presented, you can see here the erythema and some kind of chronic infection uh, was persisting there. 
since he was like uh, 15 years old. And this is um, his best quality, some mental lymph node. This is a skin powder, the lymph node, and the artery, and the vein, and this is a blood. So uh, after 36 months transfer, this is how he looks like. The reduction rate was 11% elbow area. However, um, something that we are not measuring with our tab, but you can see clearly is the hand. This is before and this is after. And the swelling reduced a lot. The erysema patch was also gone. This is his progress, pre-op, post-operative 16 months, 18 months, and 36 months. And you can see that the reduction after um, swelling continuously to improve. Another case, um, this is a middle-aged woman with cervical cancer. After surgery and radiotherapy, you can see the lower extremely swelling like this. Um, her preoperative lymphocytography also confirmed the lymphedema. This is a donor site of some mental lymph node, the artery and the vein job blood before surgery. And this is a flap, recipient size selection, and recipient site preparation. And then this is she before and 24 months and 27 months after surgery. Um, in the 27 months after surgery photo, you can see that the monitor skin becomes slightly smaller because I started to do the revision um, for this particular case two years after surgery. So I removed part of the monitor skin and I'm expecting to remove more later on. And this is it's another case who has a grade two lymphedema. This is her lymphocytography, and this is her um, lower extremity, how she looks like before surgery. And this is the flap, some mental lymph node flap, and this is the recipient site and the flap after microvascular, microvascular anosmosis. Her ICG and ventrography, and this is her after surgery. So again, I'm showing you her course, pre-op, post-op five months, post-op 11 months, and post-op 30 months. And you can see the reduction rate keep improving and improving with time. Um, of course, um, like all these three cases I'm showing you, I also did some additional procedures for them because vascularized lymph node transfer is really not everything. Uh, this is the this is the first case, congenital lymphedema. Why there's no monitor skin here? Um, we we'll just simply re excise it after surgery. Um, usually after 12 months of the surgery, the condition and the function of the transferred lymph node will become stable. And then um, because the, the recipient side was previously swollen and now the swollen reduced. So we will have some more extra skin to replace the monitor skin and we can excise it um, in either one or a couple procedures. This is the second case, and um, you can see that the swelling reduced a lot um, because I'm also doing some kind of liposuction, especially for the upper extremity to remove part of the adipose deposition. This is a, the last case we saw earlier. Um, this is her ICG lymphandrography, but actually um, after surgery, um, she's happy with the result, but it's definitely inadequate. So I brought her back to OR, not only to revise the monitor scheme, but also to um, blind identification of lymphatic vessels and did another three lymphatic venous and osmosis here and here and here. And then the reduction rate become better and better with time. So um, this is in general the whole talk. This realized lymph node transfer is a very good um, way to resolve uh, lymphedema, um, in particular in advanced patients. But um, in addition to the flap transfer, there are multiple additional procedures that uh, we can do to touch up the case and make the results better. Thank you.